being um, adventurous and like having my own time and having freedom um, one sex partner forever and a lot of the things that they stated it seemed like they made women seem like flesh-eating monsters <laughs> and like they were just kind of like gold diggers right. which that exists but I don't feel like every girl that is looking for a responsible male is a gold digger um, so I, what are your what are your thoughts on why well, I, I mean uh, speaking on that article I feel like so they kind of are pointing the finger at guys who think that way or maybe they're writing to those guys right so when a guy looks through that and he says oh I can really relate to that right. I don't want to spend my time with a girlfriend which is like what is the point of a relationship if you're not going to share things? And if she right. wants to make a few, a few things flowery, whatever, so right. she to do that. If she wants to spend time with you, is yeah. that really a bad thing? Like, exactly. What? And, you know, some of the stuff, too, uh, that I found really interesting was the lack of um, wanting to have any... Um, not responsibility. Well, also kind of like uh, not wanting to be responsible for other people's feelings, you know, and that tends to be kind of a problem. Um, there was childish. Yeah, very childish. Um, and I'm not talking about people. I'm not talking about ma males or females that are like 18. I'm talking about adults right. that are almost 30, like you're 25 plus. You should probably have some of your life together by now. And not saying that you should jump into marriage. You should never do anything that you don't want to do. And you should, if you want to live the rest of your life single, fine. But my point is, I don't think that anyone should use someone else to make themselves feel better. And I just don't think that that's a legit way to go about things. Um, one of the... One of the uh, statements that they made in this article, the AskMen.com uh, article, that I did feel was legit was um, being afraid because a lot of girls go into other relationships or talk to other guys with previous emotional baggage. You should never do that. Don't mm -hmm. ever date a new guy talking about your old boyfriend, just like guys should not date a girl talking about their ex-girlfriend. Unless you're asked about it, don't bring it up. You're on a date with a new person. Don't ever do that. And it really just sets the tone for things to be uncomfortable and kind of weird. And it makes that other person feel inept and kind of like, why are you even on this date with me? So I, <laughs> what do you think as a guy, like if a girl kind of was just running off at the mouth about her ex and like oh well these things that he did that hurt me so bad and that's why I'm looking for a guy that doesn't do X Y and Z right I mean you know at first it seems like definite no-no I, I mean you don't want to talk about the ex especially like on a first few dates but you're right if it gets brought up which I feel like it does one of the first things I do like if I'm in a new relationship I'm like okay what what's your experience what's right your longest relationship how did your last one end right so but I mean if they're just gonna straight bring up like oh yeah I got my heart broken uh you know if we only <laughs> broke up last month I'd be like all right maybe a little red flag yeah, like, right <laughs> this girl might be a little insane right two sides of the <laughs> story so <laughs> exactly um let's see uh this was another interesting can't trust a woman was one of the pinpoints uh we learned pretty fast that many women can't be trusted this is the actual article this is so um, <laughs> they're always looking to upgrade to latch onto a man with more money more status and more stuff um commitment to a relationship means putting your heart on the line of course it does and none of us want a sharp stiletto heel spiking us in the back with our as our ex-girlfriend scrambles off to the next guy. Women aren't like m like man-eating <laughs> like vicious creatures. Some of them are. Some of them are terrible terrible people. But some men are terrible people too. And I think that these are the things that make um this subject you know, hit each other. Like, men and women both build these walls up that makes them clash and not try to understand each other. Not even necessarily just not understand whatsoever, but just not try to understand. And, you know, I think that opening the mode of communication will help male and females kind of 
get together and understand one another, hopefully. Um, uh, so, do you, if you have anything else to say about that... Yeah, this, I mean, this article, I can see it's, like I said, it's written to a certain person. It's like, oh, this is so, like, nails on a chalkboard. But yeah. I, I feel like, listen, like you said, there are crazy women... I'm very thankful. I have a very wonderful, loving girlfriend, and I'm totally thankful for it. <laughs> but, like, I know some bad experiences. Like, yeah. My, and and when guys are friends with a guy that, like, dated a crazy girl, yeah. that, that, you know, keeps you on your toes and, like, makes you, even if it's not your personal relationship, makes you not trust women a little less. But going as far to say, like, Yep, women are practically blood sucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want when you're single, but when you're not, it's not even worth it. It's yeah, like, it's just jeez. Yeah, that and it's sad. It's really, and you know, and like I said, not that you have to jump into a relationship and immediately be married, but if, even if you're dating a couple of people, like I don't understand why it's so scary. Like. To me, I think it's easy to just be honest, um, have tact, don't bring up like terrible things that will turn anybody off, and you know, don't bring up exes and stuff that will make someone uncomfortable who you barely know. Right. Uh, that's just kind of simple. Um, so I'm going to segue into the latter half of our talk tonight, uh, which is why are there so many single ladies, which everyone knows that Beyonce song, I'm sure, uh, mostly from Kanye. <laughs> um, and uh, this is actually really interesting because when I googled why are there so many single women, um, the first thing that popped up was the 10 reasons why there are so many single black women. I think that is a subject for another day, which is uh, pretty um, interesting. Uh, so I did find this really interesting article that was on Forbes.com. It was a very uh, eloquent article. It was very well written, and it was written by a woman. Um, and she was just mainly talking about how so many of her uh, professional friends, or so many of her current female friends, are single, and how so many of them are, you know, just modern professionals, and they just kind of waited until later in their life, maybe till you know late twenties, early thirties, to start looking for a man. They right. boned up on their career. And now they're kind of like, hey, you know, I'm a little lonely. I kind of want to, you know, meet somebody. And she was basically just curious about why it is so difficult and why it seems to be so hard to just find that guy. And if they made a mistake in choosing to be professional first versus their friends right. that probably got married and pregnant after high school. My take on that is it's kind of two different things. Mm -hmm. For one, maybe if you wait till you're 30 to really like buckle down, settle down, that could, you know, obviously singles out a lot of people because a lot of people get married in their 20s. A lot right. of people find their significant other in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And the other half is when you become this professional woman and you really like go through grad school, get a, like a great job, uh, and have that, and then start looking for a man, men can sometimes get intimidated by that. Yeah. When it comes to having that male role that, like, all right, I'm the breadwinner, I want to be, like, numero uno in the household, right. and you get this alpha woman, and it can be a little intimidating, and it almost can be off-putting for some men. You know, and I kind of feel the same way. I've had uh, numerous conversations with a couple of my male friends about that same subject. And it's always really amusing to me because um, so many women, I think, in this day and age do want to be, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the strong woman and the super independent woman. I know so many girls that are like that. And there isn't anything wrong with that. Be independent. If you pay your own bills, you got your car, you're doing all of this stuff, that's awesome. But I feel like... If you expect a man to almost kind of not feel emasculated by you being so empowered, you know, you should have a seat and, you know, kind of take a look at that. Because it turns into this thing that you're trying to be the man and the woman. And I don't know if that comes from there being, you know, so many single mothers raising kids and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that and kind of being used to this empowered female. I think that 
you should be empowered. You should always feel like, you know, I'm a strong woman, whether you're single or not. Right. But you also, if you're looking for a man, don't scare him off by being so independent. Right. Not that you have to be the damsel in distress, but don't right. be like... Okay, um, saying that, that makes me think of... Do you rem Did you ever see Aliens? I never saw Aliens. Oh, you never alien saw Aliens. Shame okay. on me. Okay, well, I was going to equate it to um, some of the characters that were... There was uh, one main female character uh, that was in it, and she was she was kind of like really butch and she was like kind of as masculine as the man and they were like all military and all of the men were kind of like you're totally just like a dude and yeah. no guy wants to date their male friends unless that is their sexual preference obviously right. but no straight male wants to date their male friends and being so independent to the point that you're scaring off a man is probably in the end kind of ends up being your own fault right you know i think the male equivalent is almost like the player where it's like yeah boom like a red flag before you even get to know the person and yeah it kind of sucks like it does it and it when you walk out the door and what clothes you're wearing and your demeanor it, it really shows a lot about you and People buy, uh, people judge books by their cover. And, they do. And if you're wearing a pantsuit to the first date, you know a guy's gonna get a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good point. <laughs> um, you know, and being independent is awesome. Um, and it's funny because I also know a lot of females that talk about being independent but they like don't have their own place and don't have a car or they like want the man to have all of this stuff and then they don't have any of that shit and it's kind of like you can't look for something in a mate that you don't have yourself right and essentially you know you being single could essentially not necessarily be because you waited so long to be with anyone or you you know decided to focus on your career first that's great because our generation is kind of in the age of debt and you know right. we have to kind of get our careers together first but it's also kind of like you have to think from a man's perspective too I feel as a woman you know you have to kind of empathize and understand well am I being a little scary am I being a little crazy like what right. am I doing that might be you know, a little off-putting. Is there anything that you've ever dealt with with any previous girl that kind of was like, whoa, you're a little nuts, or like, you're a little intimidating? Um, I mean, I feel like I've, not, I've definitely been the nuts one at, at points, <laughs> you know, like, when you're getting that feel for, like, what you want in a person, right. you're just dating around. Um, no one straight up told me, like, you're nuts, but yeah. <laughs> I've gotten the hints a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I mean, how about you? Has anybody ever been like, you're being too harsh for me? Or uh, <laughs> um, you know, I've definitely got varying, uh, criticisms about my personality. I've gotten, you know, being too blunt, I've gotten, um, me too. you know, like, I've had jealous guys that were maybe like, you know, well, too many people hit on you or whatever, like weird things. Or, you know, maybe you're, I've had people say that I was too emotional, like things like that. But it's kind of like if you're in a relationship, you look to that person to kind of lean on. So it should be there for that. But um, I, unless you have anything else to say, I was going to open up for any questions. Um, from our audience here. I have one thing. Uh, you said something about, like, women, ex like, uh, you know, sometimes claiming they're independent but expecting a lot from the man. Yes. Um, maybe that kind of, like, ties into why guys have that kind of YOLO. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's like, the guy's like, oh, well, I don't have a car. I don't have my own place. Right. Maybe, like, girls won't like me. So I'm just going to be super outgoing and, and yeah. like, kind of only play the cards like they lie. And That's true. It, you know, and it is really interesting. I'm actually glad that you mentioned that because I feel that all the single ladies and YOLO being the guys clash with each other. And they don't really kind of sit down and discuss well, I feel this way because X, Y, and Z happened. And women don't sit down and go, I feel this way because X, Y, and Z happened. It's always, well, every man is terrible and you're the reason that I'm this way. 
like you have to take responsibility for being the person that you are as an right. adult. You know, again, not talking about 18 year old kids. The, I'm talking about grown adults that are like our age who should have common sense to like have adult relationships with people and adult friendships. You know, it's just kind of, it should be common sense, people. Right. <laughs> Relationship means working together. Together, growing, yes, as a unit. Making each other better. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, so right. we, we have a lot of stuff going on in the sidebar here. Cool. So <laughs> let's see about some of our questions. And any questions in the room? We have a hopefully large audience of people behind us. <laughs> so <laughs> for anyone in the room or um, in our chat that possibly would like to ask me or Jordan any questions, uh, have at it. I would definitely like to see anything that you guys have to say. Mm -hmm. um, if a woman, oh, this is from Drop Them 21 if a woman does not make herself approachable, then you can't complain when guys don't want to talk to you. That's very true. That's totally what we said. Right. Uh, Smile. Yeah, smile. <laughs> like being too, like, okay. A perfect example of something not being harsh. I was on the train on the way here uh, tonight, and um, I was looking at my phone, actually reading the articles that I was talking about earlier, and this guy was sitting across from me because it was some of those aisle seats, so they were like kind of spread out, and he was like, I guess trying to get my attention, and he had been trying to get my attention, but he started like doing like this, and I looked up at him, and he was like, oh, you know, I've been trying to get your attention for like all this time, and I was like, yeah, I ignored you because you were snapping at me like I was a dog. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then I continued to read my phone. Yeah. And then he started trying to, like, call me again. He was, like, calling me baby mama and, like, some other dumb shit. And I just ignored him the rest of the ride. So it's like, that's not how you hit on girls that you're interested in. Um, Definitely a place and a time for things. You don't want to, like, what if that's a girl of your dreams and you guys have kids together and then you tell your kid... Well, you know, I met your mother by snapping her on the train. <laughs> yeah, it's like exactly. Red flag, and like, do not. I mean, why? Why if you have to go as far to snap at someone, like they're clearly you know, not paying attention take, to you. Take the hint. Yeah, seriously. Would and you, I honestly didn't hear him until he started snapping at me, and I was just kind of like, yeah. If I was gonna ignore you, you should have just given up. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, Bralo says, men uh, need to have balls. <laughs> Guys use that intimidating excuse far too much. As a guy, nothing should intimidate you personally. That's just how I feel. Uh, you never know until you try. Um, you know, that is a very interesting excuse that he's basically saying that um, men use the excuse of women being intimidating and kind of take it to a factor of um, not being responsible for how they react and using YOLO as an excuse. Um, and, you know, that can be true. Like, when a woman is, you know, kind of like independent or whatever, I don't think a lot of the time they do know that they're being intimidating, to be fair. Um, some of them probably do, because some of them can be bitches, but some of them probably just don't know. And, uh, you know, just like some guys who are, you know, living that YOLO life probably, you know, don't think they're hurting anybody, even if they maybe are. You know, maybe the person that they hurt didn't tell them, hey, you hurt my feelings. Uh, communication is totally a big deal and you, people should use it regularly but they just don't um let's see uh, this really is turning more into a personal a debate dialogue. oh yeah <laughs> it is uh if i ask a girl her name uh that does not mean i'm trying to sleep with her i just want to get to know her that's also true but it's also the way that you go about it like what i said earlier if you're snapping at a girl that's not really uh worth it so right and i it's so fragile. Like, when you're talking to a girl and you approach a girl, is there a good way to approach a girl? I mean, yeah, you can. You can it's each woman's certain opinion. It's like yeah. certain things you can do, but really, uh, it's just such a tough thing. And you gotta like 
I mean, from my perspective, I'm a super shy guy when it comes to, like, approaching girls, and mm-hmm. I can't do it. And if I ever, like, got the balls to, like, go up to a girl and, like, got shut down, it, like, right. that'd be scarring. So, like, <laughs> yeah. It's it, fragile. It is fragile. And, it, you know, the having the fear of rejection, and that was one of my other blog topics. Um, I definitely think that you can't, men and women can't base every experience that they've ever had on a new person that they're meeting. Everybody is different and every girl isn't going to come into your house and decorate it with flowers and make you adopt a puppy. Every guy isn't going to have sex with all your friends. (laughs) So it's just, you know, it's kind of like if you're basing those unfair things on every person you meet, you will always be alone, male or female. Um, Let's see. Brello says, here's a question for you. Um, run in, uh, do you run into the problem of guys being intimidated by you, Moxie? Uh, yes, I actually have experienced that a lot. Um, I've experienced guys, like, I've actually, um, hilariously kind of chased a lot more guys than guys that chase me, to be honest. I've definitely, um, talked to a lot more guys who were probably, you know, maybe just shy or whatever. And uh, I felt like maybe they were just intimidated or like I would have their friends maybe tell me, oh, like my friend likes you or something like that. Or they would have to like build up the courage. And I mean, I know that I'm pretty outrageous and I have like different color hair every week and (laughs) like all of this stuff. Um, And guys aren't used to a girl that plays video games and all of this other stuff. Uh, But it's just kind of, I mean, yeah, it it has happened to me a lot of times. And I've also equally gotten a lot of vulgar things (laughs) said to me. So it, you know, balances out, I guess. So the vulgar (laughs) things, do they happen, like, is there a point where a guy, like, maybe agrees to date you or whatever, but then it gets to a point where he's like, you need, or maybe he doesn't say this outright, but Mm -hmm. kind of, like, says, uh, you need to let me be the man a little bit? Does it get to that point? You know, I have kind of experienced that to an extent. Like, it wasn't blatant like that, but it was kind of like I would discuss the situation that I had maybe at that time with a friend, male or female, and a lot of the guys would kind of just be like, well, maybe he just needs to be the man. And not that I would be like, you know, I'm super masculine (laughs) girl, but yeah, you know, I think sometimes as a girl that likes guy-ish things, I kind of forget sometimes that, you know, maybe you do have to just let the guy do guy stuff and, you know, understand that, you know, it's okay to, like, not have answers for everything and not be the perfect girl or, you know, whatever. But yeah, that's that's definitely, I've definitely experienced that. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever experienced a girl being too intimidating? Um, you know, maybe a little bit. Um... I I feel like sometimes girls expect certain things out of you, like when you are a man, like, mm-hmm. this might be a little, like, TMI, but <laughs> one time I was kissing a girl, uh-huh. and her bra strap had fallen down. Uh-huh. I put it back up, and she's like, are you kidding me? Like, you're like- supposed to <laughs> go to the next thing, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> Okay. What? <laughs> you weren't going to slap me? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Right. That's so. funny. Um, yeah, that's really funny. Um, it's And again, I think that definitely feeds into the whole, you know, every person that you meet is different from the other person. Like, you can't expect for this girl to be like you're the last girl you knew, and you can't expect this guy to be like the last guy you knew. You know, so it's... Uh, it's one mm-hmm. of those things. And I feel like, well, if there are single girls out there and you are, you know, at that point in your life where you're ready for, like, a committed relationship, mm-hmm. I think the first thing that you do is, like, you really just need to have, like, self-reflection and, like, you know, find out who you are, even if you, like, obviously know who you are the best. Right. Just kind of, like, be like, well, am I a little masculine? Do I like to take the wheel sometimes? Yeah. And maybe find a guy who's, like, totally not set in his ways of masculinity and, like, right. wanting to give up 
the uh, reins sometimes, and I feel yeah. like that yin yin yang will totally you pan know, out. Well. Yeah, exactly. Because um, even when I watch like reality TV shows, or like for example, like Bridezillas or something like that, where there tends to be a lot of crazy women on those shows, That's a little and bit. Um, it like I think constantly. Who would marry them? Why would you ever marry them? Because the men seem to be polar opposites. But then again, it's like, it could just be for TV. It could be, you know, one of those things where it's like, well, maybe they're just like that during this week. Or they could just be like that all the time. And maybe that person balances them out. And a lot of those men tend to be submissive. So maybe they're just okay with the woman being like that. Um, For just the average guy who's flipping the channels and comes across something like that is watching a program like that and seeing a girl be like that, being like, oh, man, I better be careful. I just better, like, run through these girls yeah. instead of, like, treating them seriously because they're just going to act like this. Like this. Out. Exactly. It's scary. It's like, <laughs> it, yeah. for someone who works in TV, I just hate looking at stuff like that. I'm like, oh, man, this is just ruining the perception of women. And I get, like, Bridezilla's, like, I love to watch it because it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, man, I'm lucky. Like, I'm going to go for a girl like that. But, right. Like, it sucks for some of these guys that has to have to deal with something Who like that. don't know the balance. Yeah. And um, I think, too, that it's really interesting um, to see stuff like that because, like, with the YOLO complex, like you said, because, you know, a guy will watch it and end up being like, well... Are all girls crazy like that? Like, there was one episode that I watched that tend to... It happened to be, like, one of the more popular ones um, where in uh, this guy, he wouldn't do whatever his fiance wanted to do. And so she goes into the room and yanks his Xbox out of the cord and throws it on the ground, and it breaks. And she leaves out of the room, and she's like, do what I told you the fuck to do. And it was just kind of like... Yeah, that's crossing the line because you wouldn't yeah. want him to crash your car into like a light post and be like, well, bitch, I told you to do what I wanted you to do. And those are the things where double standard crosses the line. Yeah. You know, like you can't you can't do something like that and then expect to still have a fiance at the right. end of the day because clearly that's something that he invested money in that's important to him. It's Xbox. Yeah. Not yeah. Fuck with the Xbox. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was probably one of the craziest ones. Oh, man. As a gamer, of course, that made me cringe, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm super like, oh, don't, like, touch my controller the wrong way, like, right. with my video game possession. So <laughs> I was just like, I saw yeah. that and I was like, do I even want to click this right now? Yeah. I'm breaking the axe back. Yeah, that was scary. Um, but, you know, it comes down to that things that we see are tend to be extremes, and women shouldn't be afraid that every man is terrible, and men shouldn't be afraid that every girl is a terrible whore. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of, you know, self-reflection, like you mentioned earlier. I think both sexes should take their time to sit down and kind of uh, reflect. So I have a question from Bralo. Um, Do you think the same reasons apply to the opposite sex? Or what about a situation where it's opposite, um, where girls are afraid to commit with guys and why guys are single? Um Girls, let's see. Uh, well, I feel like, okay, so why are guys single because girls want or no commitment? The only thing that I've really heard that, like, hate to, like, jump to conclusions. No, but, like, yeah. The only time I've really heard, like, a girl who wants to be single, who is, like, 25 plus who wants to be single, is because of that professional career, maybe, mm-hmm. or because she's just been hurt so many times in the past yeah (laughs) or so it could just be an excuse where it's like maybe you need to take a little hint yeah because some girls use that as like oh yeah you know right like Like we've we've all heard it exactly exactly and um yeah it's definitely it's interesting and i do think that that could be the reason i haven't really heard that very much of um yeah i think those are essentially the answers is probably you know, I'm afraid of commitment because I've been hurt so many times. That's right. the only reason I've ever heard that from a female. But the men tend to have that list of reasons that I read off <laughs> for the uh, more or less. 
Uh, so, you know, I don't hate guys, and uh, I think guys are awesome. He doesn't hate guys. I don't hate women, and I know you don't. Yeah, so let's just get along. 25 plus people, we should all just try to, you know, I think it would be an interesting thing to have a round table discussion or something like that about this subject. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. If I have any other questions, you can ask them now. But we are about to get ready for Wednesday Night Fights with Corey Green. Yeah, Corey Green! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I'm open for any questions. Let's see. Bottom line, though, when you're starting a relationship, treat... It's so simple, but it's like the golden rule of treat people how you want to be treated or treat a girl how you want to be treated. Hi, Corey. That's yes, not yes. the trickiest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait till you see, like, the archive of that. <laughs> yes. That's this needs to be the new avatar for uh, <laughs> right. <PG. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Corey like this, <laughs> it should be him this. like this. Right. <laughs> Her my street cred. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all this, with all the single ladies. So, um, YOLO. And we'll see you whenever my next vlog is in a couple of weeks. And I'll have a new subject for you guys. Thank, Thank you so much, Jordan. Thank you, are you for great. having me. <laughs> thanks, Corey. This is fun. Okay, <laughs> so, thanks, everybody. Stick around for <laughs> Wednesday Night Fight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, she got a random audience. That's what we have to see. Right, that looks like the studio audience. <laughs> Hey guys. I got you. That was fun. That was fun, yay.